Okay. Glad I remember to do that. So we go about one minute after the hour, uh, Shelley. Are you yes. ready to kick off? Yeah, we can do that. We have some people joining right now. Welcome to QA SIG. We're going to be getting started in just a moment. So we're just going to let people join the meeting and then we will get going. Very happy to have Ben Berry tonight with us. He has a lot to show us, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think most of the people on here are pretty familiar with the format. You know, it was uh, interesting mm -hmm. for us to go from, from in-house. Sorry, guys, we don't have pizza and beer for you tonight. Uh, but <laughs> right. what's really kind of great about the new format is we're able to bring folks in uh, that aren't necessarily in Seattle, and we don't need to bring them into town. Uh, so that's great. I think most of the folks on this call are familiar with the format, so we will uh, go through the presentation uh, and everybody will be on mute uh, during the duration of the presentation. And then at the end, we'll have an opportunity to do uh, questions and answers and you can type your questions into chat. Uh, you could raise your hand, we could go live mic if you'd like to do that as well, but there'll be uh, plenty of time. I think we're going to run probably 20-25 minutes with the presentation that Ben has prepared for us tonight. Uh, and then we'll have lots of time at the end uh, for follow up if you have questions. So have to admit, I cheated. I looked at this earlier, and this is pretty fascinating. Uh, I think you guys are going to like this. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Ben Berry, who is the CEO of Airship Technologies Group. And uh, he is going to do a presentation for us, and then he will be live to answer questions for us at the end. Hello, everyone, and it's great to be here tonight. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, delivering on the presentation and taking questions at the end. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Okay, and so I'm going to start this video presentation, and then at the end, um, Ben is going to answer questions. So bear with me while I get this loaded. Designing innovation has more to do with pushing the envelope of what is possible and needed, rather than swimming in the status quo. Design follows function, and the results, well, they can be amazing. Airship Technologies Group is a design and manufacturer company for unmanned aerial vehicles. What's unique about Airship, we are building long flight endurance, clean tech propelled drones. It is my pleasure to present at the Quality Assurance Special Interest Group. My name is Ben Berry, and I am the CEO of Airship Technologies Group. In my business, managing mission critical products in flight is about high speed vertical takeoff and landing autonomous aircraft. To that end, I have prepared a video of my presentation, and I am prepared to take questions at the end. From the liftoff to the flight control autopilot, software can be found almost everywhere in our avionics systems. And to ensure the safety of the mission and the aircraft, aerospace software applications must be vigorously tested within strict FAA guidelines to ensure that they operate correctly. So failure of onboard critical software, both its safety critical and or mission critical, could have far reaching repercussions. Avionics systems comprise many thousands of functions and millions of lines of code. But in terms of the development of multifunctional advanced structural concepts for future vertical lift platforms, I will discuss aspects necessary for quality assurance of the Airship VX program, both our VX-5 and VX-24, high-speed vertical takeoff and landing VTOL air vehicles. Current rotorcrafts lack the weight efficiency to enable the desired performance from future vertical lift platforms, such as speed, range, endurance, payload capacity, and availability. 
So airship technology groups, multifunctional advanced structural air platform vehicles are researching and developing innovative, durable, fatigue resistant, damage tolerant, and weight optimized structural concepts applicable to new rotorcraft structures. And the air vehicles must be tested and retested to make sure all components operate as expected. But first, what inspires airship aerospace? I work at the Skunk Works and it's got a legacy of doing the things that people don't think can be done. Uh, flying very high, flying very fast, making airplanes invisible to radar. Where do we go next? You know, that's always the, the fun question. You know, right now our airplane designs are very reductionist. We have fuel over here. We have the cockpit. We have the engine. They're all separate parts. What if we could integrate those parts together in a holistic manner? Can we do things like embed the carbon nanotubes to make conductive uh, structure so that a structure but literally flows through the structure? We'll be able to grow or make a structure that say is the skin of an aircraft that inside of that is also contained the sensors or the energy storage, or many different multiple functions. Materials that are on the uh, lab bench right now, they can literally change shape on command. They can become almost a muscular material. We could have an airplane that optimizes its shape for the different flight conditions it's in. There's definitely a lot of amazing technology that's going on with the, the Lockheed Samurai, based on a small maple seed-like looking device. The fact that we can package enough energy for something like that to fly and still carry a sensor, a camera, uh, enough control capability for it to fly is amazing to me. As we go forward, we're gonna find new ways of using these unmanned vehicles. They'll probably be autonomous. So they'll be like UAVs, but carry cargo around where there are currently no infrastructure in place. We may have small swarms of small vehicles interacting with a larger vehicle that, that basically uh, combines the information from that swarm. So maybe one vehicle flies a small distance and another vehicle learns from it and knows which way to fly. Probably what makes sense is a heterogeneous swarm. One where not every element of the swarm is the same. Some elements of the swarm carrying sensors, some carrying other types of electronics. So it's an adaptable system that can adapt to a changing environment and a changing future that is difficult for us to predict. The true value of research is not in the answer you get that you knew you were looking for, but the answer that you find that you didn't know to look for. Airship incorporates structural integrity to optimize the airship via air vehicle. Our R&D inspires technology design aspects and quantifies the benefits of an innovative air vehicle baseline for use in scalable airframes for multifunctional use cases. Design and inspires innovation is manufacturable for durable airframe fatigue resistance. It adheres to damage tolerant demands and optimizes structural concepts that integrate propulsion within the wings, all while doing this producing airframe scalability applicable for advanced rotorcraft. The air vehicle is innovative from incorporation of its aerial shuttle bay doors for modular configurations to its use and placement of high-speed dual rotating ducted fans. The Airship VX high-speed VTOL program captures use cases for both the smaller VX-5 for flight intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, close air support and logistics resupply, whereas the much larger VX-24 is designed for autonomous cargo and troop transport.
For the airship vertical takeoff and landing, the Alpha Drive high-speed VTOL propulsion was invented to allow for aircraft runway independence. The VX delivers the Alpha Drive propulsion system for transitioning from VTOL to fixed wing flight within a moment's command. And its components are quality checked and assemblies traceable to original equipment manufacturers. There is no tilt rotor arm scenario or rotors hanging off the ends of wings. The VX high-speed VTOL combines airship's Alpha Drive thrust transition, airframe innovation, and integrated high-speed propulsion, enabling flight from treetop hover to an altitude of 30,000 feet. The Alpha Drive carries our U.S. patent and supply chain, and the Alpha Drive aeronautical capabilities include top and bottom wing integrated dual thrust iris dampers to create super compressed air thrust. The air vehicle flies with lateral turbo shaft engines housed in the lower fuselage that power the VX24 lateral ducted propellers mounted on titanium engine mounts. Optimizing the VX parasitic drag includes the displacement of air by several aeronautical structures on and through the airframe. We strive to minimize turbulence generated in the airstream or hindrance of air moving over the aircraft's airfoil and surface. We minimize parasitic drag over our wing integrated alpha drives with lateral propulsion iris top and bottom air deflection enclosures that morph. Calculations incorporate drag from the front intakes and the rear exhaust thrust. Form drag, also known as pressure drag, arises because of the shape and size of the airframe. The pressure drag is proportional to the difference between the pressures acting on the front leading edge and back trailing edge of the immersed aircraft wings and the frontal area. The VX airfoil incorporates low camber, low drag, high speed, and a thin wing section suitable for high speed VTOL. We've integrated propulsion within the wings for VTOL and forward flight as the Alpha Drive irises open and close. And the integrated wing shape is optimized for both conditions of flight. The VX research, development, and quality testing includes the three types of parasitic drag, form drag, interference drag, and skin friction drag, plus the payload weight. When weight is increased in or on the VX air vehicle, the aircraft needs to fly at a higher angle of attack to produce more lift, opposing the aircraft's increase in weight. This increases both the induced drag created by the wings and the overall parasitic drag on the aircraft. Flight optimization quality assurance is needed to reduce the effects of several factors such as add-on weight, non-primary weight from mission enablers, and contributions achieved to the VX multifunctional structure. Further consideration is given to embedded components, application of composites, smart or adaptive structures for morphing alpha drives, and a thorough understanding of variability effects on the VX air platform structural response. In general, parasitic drag is caused by form resistance due to shape, skin friction, interference, and all other elements that are not contributing to lift. Induced drag is created as a result of the generation of lift. Total drag on the aircraft is made up of parasitic drag and lift-induced drag. For structural efficiency, the Airship VX achieves a low structural weight by creating large decreases in aircraft gross weight and size made possible by conscientious weight savings in the air vehicle structural design and lightweight but strong 3D manufacturing materials. A review of the variables in the VX aircraft design and construction affect the weight of the structure. The review is made chiefly to emphasize the close interplay in project work between the structural and aerodynamic effects of MOSA known as modular open systems approach layout configurations. Using most of the principles and paired with the VX's wide area of shuttle bay doors, the VX design provides for ease of upgrade and interchangeability to meet diverse and competitive autonomous air vehicle missions. The VX employs a RAM air intake design using dynamic air pressure created by air vehicle motion to increase the static air pressure inside the alpha drives. Propelling nozzles convert internal energy of the alpha drive into a propulsive high speed force. Two tail mounted electric turbofans magnify the VX velocity and acceleration to jet speed.
Comparative structural design efficiency is concluded via weight prediction formulae as presented by the means of the VX structural design efficiencies of different onboard configurations. Structural efficiency includes improvement in specific load capability per pound of component structure, con contributions achieved through structural concepts, load prediction, static or dynamic stress analysis, and embedded sensors. The purpose of structural integrity verification is to ensure compliance with the structural design criteria. Structural integrity verification is used to verify that air vehicle load paths and stresses are as predicted and eliminates the possibility of poor structural design details to alleviate and prevent, where possible, future maintenance difficulties. Component development efforts reduces the time required to design, fabricate, test, and evaluate the Airship VX. The work breakdown structure, known as WBS, includes the development of a virtual prototype, virtual testing, modeling, and simulation. Design of flight maneuvers, building block approach systems of systems, and probabilistic failure analysis. Airship identifies software component traceability testing as key to the integrity of the Airship VX program to establish, evaluate, and substantiate sustainable component integrity. Software component traceability testing also includes airborne systems traceability testing, operational environment quality testing, and satellite communication software testing. There are 920 manufacturing segments with thousands of assemblies and components and subcomponents to manufacture and test the VX24. VX airborne systems such as flight controls, avionics, and engine control are typical examples of safety critical real-time systems. These systems are extremely software intensive and complex. The VX operates in environments with diverse ranges of temperature, humidity, air pressure, vibration and movement, and are subject to the effects of age, maintenance, and weather. Typical characteristics required of such systems are reliability, fault tolerance, and deterministic timing guarantees. The construction and maintenance of the VX involves a variety of products, including wide bandwidth amplifiers, high voltage connectors, electromagnetic interference EI, EMI filters, hybrid gas to electric converters, laser rangefinder receivers, onboard computers, lighting, communication systems, and solid state serial bus interfaces. These products, along with parts and supporting equipment and subsystems, are designed and manufactured by dozens of companies and different specialties. One thing all of these suppliers must have in common is the concern for quality and compliance. And to satisfy quality requirements, of the U.S. Department of Defense, the DOD, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and the U.S. Federation Aviation Administration, the FAA. Suppliers to the VX program must be able to trace all components of a failing part back to its origin. To do this, we ultimately hold suppliers accountable for providing reliable products. Suppliers must have the ancestry of those components on file. The VX is constructed by additive manufacturing, rapid manufacturing, robotic automation manufacturing, streamlined cost effectiveness, and because design follows function, it innovates to meet customer requirements. Airship uses software failure mode and effects analysis as a technique to identify potential software design or deep dive process problems. The method examines causal relationship and effects of lower level failures on aircraft components and systems. There are four ways to measure the impact of a software failure mode. Step one, identify potential software failures and effects by analyzing the functional requirements and their effects to identify all failure modes. Step two, determine severity. Severity is the seriousness of failure consequences. Step three, gauge likelihood of the failure occurrence. And finally, step four, detect a failure. For software failure, detention, and accommodation, we test and optimize the VX variable pitch propeller blades. The VX's variable pitch lateral propellers are controlled wirelessly by the autopilot and can adjust blade pitch during flight. 
For VTOL, propeller blade pitch is positioned for lift. For full throttle forward flight, the alpha drive top and bottom iris is closed and the internal blade pitch changes from maximum lift capacity to maximum contained air compression for intake to exhaust high speed thrust. The blade angle adjusts to the optimum value for the phase of flight, be it takeoff and landing, full throttle climb, cruise, or even hover. Considering the VX alpha drive thrust of the VX5 or the combined thrust of the VX24 alpha drive and rear mounted turbofans, there is more than enough propulsion accommodated. Software communications architecture, the Flight Command Center provides reliable operation of communication systems, navigation equipment, and radar detection systems. The radio frequency interference between systems must be managed through design, system integration, and testing. Adhering to compliance standards for radio frequency systems is a legal requirement for authorization to operate an air vehicle. The certification bodies like the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the European Aviation Safety Agency stick to software considerations related to DO-178C set out in the certification program. The guidelines for airborne systems and equipment is the approval process for software-based aerospace systems. The guideline works to ascertain that critical and operational software involved in airborne systems are operating as desired and are not a threat to safety. Therefore, investing in a reliable and independent quality assurance service provider to conduct proper safety compliance testing is essential to ensure avionic systems operation and security. In summary, even though test automation is a common and well-known way to reduce software testing workload, mathematical modeling has become another remedy. The Airship VX program expects to employ a model-based approach and fuzz testing technology, where a simulation is created to show precisely how an aircraft will behave when a certain software is installed into the system. Fuzz testing is the process of bombarding the software system of the aircraft with random data to try and find its breaking point. As you can imagine, software encapsulates the aviation sector more than you might realize. It is no surprise that testing has become such an indispensable part of the industry. However, the process can be problematic given both the complication and volume of data to be dealt with. With more and more progress in testing, we at Airship Aerospace have to be on our toes to keep up with the requirements of the various systems we've discussed and our relevant solutions to make progress and survive in a rapidly changing global environment. There's a familiar pattern in reinvention. Rethinking answers to problems lead to a new technology coming along to fill a long-standing need. But as it becomes widely implemented, questions arise over how best to use it and how it may change the rest of the world. I think at the end of that was just perfect, Ben. <laughs> uh, so we're open for uh, we're open for questions now. Please uh, feel free to raise your hand or just type them into the uh, Q and A or chat, and uh, and we will field them as they come in. Um, we kind of started on this with this question that I had for you prior to the presentation, Ben, and I'm just really curious uh, still about. Uh, transition from vertical to horizontal flight and the, and the irises uh, closing and, and how that how that happens. Can you uh, can you speak to that at all? Well, during the, the transition from vertical um, liftoff and, and forward flight, it really is a balancing in terms of our autopilot, in terms of thrust that we ex ex exert with the, the lateral and front uh, dual rotating uh, blades so that once you're up, those blades begin to uh, wirelessly change the angle from a lifting uh, angle to more of a compression. 
And simultaneous to the compression of that, we're beginning to, to close or morph the irises, both the top and bottom, so that you're now exerting pressure out the rear exhaust as you are uh, ex extinguishing the vertical uh, nature of the lift. It's really a balancing in our, in our algorithms. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're so heavily dependent on the fly-by-wire aspects, you mentioned uh, radio interference. Uh, what do you do to minimize the radio interference to be in compliance? Well, in terms of the interference, we can shield the uh, airframe itself uh, in strategic locations where we have our electronics. Uh, this is a, a factor with the military as well. The, the, the fact that um, electromagnetic interference, for example, is, is big in, in terms of the uh, military. And so the shielding doesn't have to go over the entire airframe or within the whole airframe. It's only within those components that could be affected uh, by that kind of interference. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for open questions. I don't see anybody out there. Um, I guess we must have answered all your questions. <laughs> yep. oh, it looks like there's one from Cindy. Okay, good. There she is. Uh, Cindy says, I'm curious about the process for develop developing test plans themselves. Yes. You do the test plans have to go through a specific regulatory review? And does it depend on how critical to functionality the systems being tested are? And are you able to have an iterative, agile development and testing environment? Or is it fairly uh, process oriented and structured? Well, it's fairly a process. We use a work breakdown structure to actually develop uh, from the requirements to the design to the actual construction of the various components that will be the airframe, the wings, um, and all the electronics that goes on board. Uh, the test plan follows that work breakdown structure. So everything that we are, are, are creating and building, uh, we also have our test plans and iterative test plans uh, until we get to the, the desired results. Okay. Uh, Park Blake says, I'm curious about the redundancy and the associated uh, testing to confirm redundancy, redundancy systems, particularly software systems. Yeah. Well, the redundancy today is really within the dual um, operating rotors. Um, there, in, in the nose, there's, there's a certain amount of redundancy there. Uh, we don't have dual rotors in the wings yet. Uh, and so that would be an aspect that we would have to uh, research and develop. Um, but we want to keep those wings fairly um, uh, as thin as possible in terms of the aerodynamics of the aircraft. Uh, we do have redundant systems in terms of uh, power redundant systems, uh, communication systems, uh, duplications of uh, components uh, where, we, where we find it necessary. You know, you mentioned 920 manufacturing segments. That has got to be a challenge on the project management side, uh, yes. making sure that uh, that everybody is meeting those specifications. Are any there any unique techniques that you're using there? Uh, well, when you develop when you're developing aircraft, it's really a system of systems. So as you break the whole apart into various subcomponents, there lies the opportunity for project teams to really gather the requirements, uh, do the design work and fulfill the obligation of what's required for that particular system. Then the testing has to be done uh, throughout the entire uh, launch of the aircraft. Um, and we typically don't launch the aircraft vertically until we do sim simulations on, on software so that we can kind of prove the, the calculus ahead of time. So we kind of predict the um, probability of success. And when we don't find that, we have to simply do more work. Okay, That's, we'll give everybody just a second to see if anybody has any other questions for you, Ben. And you might have covered it. So as, as we always do, we will, uh, oh, here we go. Let's, let me pull you up here. Okay. 
how closely do the hardware test people and the software test people work together? And what have been some of the good lessons learned from the software hardware teams working together? Well, as you might imagine, we're a small um, business. So we only have about 12 people. And, and over, the, over the time that we've been operating, we've had different people come and go. So we try to keep a, a core group that is assigned to critical um, mission systems or applications. Uh, they have to work together. So the hardware folks and software, much of the hardware is run by software. So it's, it's kind of an integrated approach to uh, how we develop the various systems and then have to test in unison, uh, both hardware and software uh, folks working together. Uh, which technology innovations do you envision growing most rapidly in the future based on your current systems? AI, data analytics, et cetera. Well, I, I think the, the if we were talking use cases, primarily what we're developing is more for a, a military use case or first responder use case. And so the systems that we are building are really based on the requirements of the Air Force or the Army um, or and or uh, municipality first responders. So we tend to look at those requirements and, and, and fit those requirements, fit the aircraft to the requirements of a system. For example, the, the VX-24 was actually developed for the, a development contract for the US uh, uh, Air Force uh, called AFWorks. Uh, there were some 316 firms that went in to the bid on that. Uh, we were in that top 10, top, top eight. Uh, we didn't land the contract for that development work but it's really dependent on the requirements of what the customers are asking for. They're also looking for what is the art of the possibility? Uh, because if it's the same thing they have today, they can simply go and buy that. Uh, but in fact, our aircraft really had to have innovation uh, around the capabilities, around the kinds of test programs that we were going to bring to, to bear to the solution. Okay, I think we're pretty well covered. I don't see anything else coming in. Uh, as always, uh, we will post this on our site and you'll have uh, access to the presentation. If anybody does have any follow-up questions, please uh, forward those to us and we'll get them to Ben. Make sure that, uh, uh, that those are answered for you. Uh, oh, I do have one more question that came up and it says, can you talk a bit about security testing? Uh, security testing for us is more about encryption of our, our applications and systems, uh, especially for the kind of customer. Uh, they have their own military encryption uh, software that is required as a part of the requirements. So that's what we would be using for any particular customer. All right. Well, really uh, appreciate the presentation and all the information and look forward to seeing these things. Well, I, I'm, it's like all the other applications, right? Like the GPS or anything, it starts out with the military and then they realize how many other uh, applications are, uh, are possible with this. So uh, thanks again uh, for joining us tonight, Ben, and appreciate, uh, appreciate the presentation. Right. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much, Ben. All right, take care, have a great night. Thank you.